Hello everyone, this is Warlord and we are on our way to Historicon 2014. Uh, Historicon is the largest uh, war gaming convention in the United States. Uh, it's a historical war gaming convention, but uh, it's uh, a variety of different games, not just historicals. Uh, each year there's a theme uh, to the convention. Uh, I believe this year's theme is, uh, you know, the world wars going from the Seven Years' War, the First World War, Second World War, anywhere where there is uh, many nations in uh, conflict. Uh, but uh, I'm going to be running the Fords of Eisen down there. Uh, there's several other strategy battle games that are going to be played, as well as uh, a variety of games, uh, not just historicals. Like I said, they do uh, some fantasy, some sci-fi, even some sports games. There's a guy who does a, uh, a soccer, a, a football game, uh, you know, with the, the World Cup teams. And it's all on tabletop. Uh, these aren't paper games, uh, paper counter type games. Uh, these are all tabletop games. Uh, and it's in Fredericksburg, Virginia, which is uh, the site of one of the great battles of the American Civil War. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, go down to Fredericksburg and I'll show you what Historicon's all about. And here we are. We've arrived at the Fredericksburg Expo Center for Historicon 2014. And as you can see, Cars are filling up, it's almost nine in the morning. By noon, there'll be cars all over the place out onto the road, because people are coming from all over the United States, Canada, and a couple of people, will, a couple of people fly in from overseas for this. It's, it's such a big uh, convention. So let's go inside and take a look what's going on. All right, got the shuttle stop. People coming in from hotels. A lot of people want to stay down in uh, Fredericksburg because they want to go see the uh, historical sites down there. And as you can see here, this is pre-registration. And over here, this is the line to get into the dealer hall. And this year at Historicon, uh, like we did last year, you get a free miniature. Uh, this one's from Warlord Games. Uh, and it seems to be some sort of World War II miniature. And it also comes with a set of dog tags. All right, still kind of early. People are still setting up here, as you can see. Uh, this looks to be a... Uh, this looks to be like a English Pike and Shot, actually. Game. Beautiful terrain. This looks to be like the uh, Battle of the Point or something. This one here looks to be a uh, World War II D-Day invasion, invasion of Normandy. Very well done. See all the obstacles on the beach. And as we get into Normandy, you see the fields, the bacage. Beautiful terrain board. Different types of terrain you can see on this type of game. A lot to negotiate. Uh, this is a 15 millimeter game, or a 20 millimeter game it looks like. And you can see the size of the figures, as well as the tanks. Beautiful board. And like I said earlier, it's not just historical games. Here we got a sci-fi game. This is a, this is my video blog, so don't worry. This is uh, Battlestar Galactica, and it looks to be the new Galactica in the old Cylon base station. Is that the Revel model? Yeah. I had one of those back in the day. I think my mom threw it out. But you can see Colonial Vipers there. Okay, and they also do tournament play here. Uh, every year they do a DBA tournament. So everyone's setting up. You can see the different DBA fields already set up. So those of you who like tournament play, uh, every year at Historicon they do DBA. I think they also do Fields of Glory. Now that that's picking up. It's Saga. Oh, it is Saga. I'm sorry. Okay. This is a Saga tournament. But they do have DBA as well. Somewhere over here. And the most important thing whenever you do a convention, you have to have the food. And as you can see, Everything you need, power drinks, a little bit of water, a little bit of beer for right after the game. Let's do a beer and pretzels game. Yeah, we might get out. 
Hey, you know something about how to take us to the Seems to be another pike and shot game. Um, Looks to be uh, they're all they're all set up as voice that they're gonna use. And this is Battle of the Boing. Yes, Orange and Glory. Oh yeah. It's not gonna be a battle today. Holy crap! And this is the vendors hall. As you can see, it is absolutely enormous. If you can't find it here, you can't find it. And it looks like we got Warlord Games set up here. One of the sponsors of Historicon, I believe. They're World War II. These are some of the Perry miniatures here. They're starting to do uh, Napoleonics now as well. As well as World War II. And this is Fired and Sword. This is a game uh, that originated in Poland. I think uh, just about a year ago, they translated the rules into English. And this covers uh, the wars of the Cossacks, the Tartars, uh, basically Eastern Renaissance, uh, Janissaries, you know, the Turks. Uh, beautiful figures, they're all done in 15 millimeter. And they come with uh, terrain uh, to match as well. Uh, you have starter sets basically. Uh, it starts out with a skirm set and you can build up uh, by add-ons up to uh, divisions to entire armies. As you see, really nice terrain, very themed, and they just came out with a new expansion called the Deluge to cover the Northern War of 1655 to 1665. And here we have Architects of War and Perry Miniatures. Again, some more of the new Perry line. As you see, these are hard plastics. American Civil War. Well. And also, looks like we have some Step Warriors Mongols as well as the Teutonic Knights going into the later medieval period. I have no idea what that is, but it looks pretty cool. Flying monkeys. Definitely use some flying monkeys, and wow, that's a flying monkey. What kind of size are that thing? Fantaside, a 28 millimeter fantasy skirmish. Ah, may as well replace SBG. I don't know. Take a look at these guys. And of course, Saga. This is the new Dark Age skirmish, which is taking the gaming world by storm. If you like SBG, you would definitely like Saga. As you can see, they're branching from the Dark Ages as well as the Middle Ages, going into the time of the Crusades, and look, these are different war bands. Very nice. And this is Thoroughbred Manchurs. They do a line of 15 millimeter ships. Absolutely awesome if they could do Corsairs in 20 millimeter, but uh, I think the ships are actually in resin, so they're really hard to mold. But as you can see, these are some of the, the largest ships and all the rigging done. Uh, I think this line is mostly uh, the War of 1812, and as you can see, it's absolutely beautiful. And this is Miniature Building Authority. They make uh, terrain pieces in 28 millimeter as well as 15 millimeter. Uh, as you can see, they do something for 20th century to the Dark Ages, as well as the castle over there. So basically almost every period you can get uh, uh, buildings, mostly the buildings come already painted so you don't have to worry about painting the buildings. Uh, they also have 15 millimeter buildings over there. As you can see, very well done, very high quality. And you even got a wizard's tower over here. And this is their castle series, this is in 28 millimeter. You have walls, turrets, barred houses, and you have a little castle keep over here. 
Everything comes already pre-painted, so you don't have to worry about painting anything. Yeah, I broke down. I bought two buildings. Uh, this one here, the Spanish Main Series, as you can look, kind of looks like a Gondorian building. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to probably dry brush uh, the outside a little bit with a uh, small white, as well as probably redo the roof uh, to make it match uh, the rest of my mind's tier of the buildings. And this is a sci-fi bunker. I'm going to use this for 20 millimeter sci-fi, uh, probably uh, Star Wars miniatures. So. Uh, Wait and see for that one. And people are already lining up for Wally's Basement. Can you believe that? Essentially what Wally's Basement is, it's a flea market for war gamers. And everything you're trying to get rid of, you can get rid of here. So everybody is looking for a bargain. So I might have to jump in line. Okay, here we have uh, no more. Belgian, if the Swiss are done, the Belgian tank goes. German tank. Oh, that's right. This is actually, it looks like a Middle Eastern Type 7, but actually, it's no more. It's a beautiful version of the And you got a market here. Okay, so here's what happens when you wait five minutes to get one. It gets really, really, really. And as you can see, everyone is trying to get a discount or a bargain here at Molly's Basement. And this is why you wait in line. Because I just got the White Council, the original White Council, for 20 bucks. Can't beat that. This thing's going for like $150 on eBay right now. Also picked up some more War of the Ring trays. I can never do without these. These are now out of production by Games Workshop. And I think I got them for $3 each. Can't beat that. All right, we're probably gonna have to leave the dealer hall off soon. Uh, I just bought some Count Cavalry, Fields of Glory, 28 millimeter. Uh, I'm gonna try and convert these for Dunlinding Cavalry. We'll see how that works, but 15 bucks, I was here. I gotta get out of here or else I'm gonna be bankrupt, so. Now that I spent all my money in the uh, flea market, uh, this looks to be a uh, Civil War game, as you can see. We got some Iron Clans out there. The Merrimack and the Monitor. This looks to be uh, scratch built or wood. Very finely done 28 millimeter. And you can see it from here. It's here. All lined up. And Confederate cavalry on the hill here. Going across the field to oh, it's, is that the 69th Irish. Uh, yeah. And there's Wobs over here. That's a good view. Well done terrain board as well. And here we have uh, looks to be a 25 millimeter Seven Years War battle. This is what I usually do. I usually do a uh, horse and musket type game. As you can see, we have uh, horse trims all over here. And the Prussians on the over other side of the battlefield there. Oh, Austrian artillery there. As well as some Brassier. As well as our Austrian general. Okay, and of course you got the awards for the convention for the uh, best games. As you can see, different categories. Very nicely done figures. Your reward. Best in show over here. Best theme event. The Young Guard Awards. To be honest, I have no idea what these other awards are. Who knows? Maybe I'll get one. Alright, and this is what I call a terrain board. Uh, lots of lots of trees. This is obviously an American Civil War scenario. As you can see, they're setting up. Uh, looks like Union over here. The corn stalks. And 
here we have a game of Battletech going on. As I told you, there's several different types of gaming going on during the convention, not just historical gaming, but there's some sci-fi gaming as well. And this type of game is open to all ages. So if you bring your kids to something like this, they can come in and jump in with one of these sci-fi tech games. And here's another Battletech game going on. You can see the city over here. Some of these minis. Okay, here we have a zombie game going on. And these are one of the these are one of the more festive games at these types of uh, conventions. As you can see, they're not taking the game too serious. There's no arguing about what this unit did historically or how far this weapon's range is. And this is another type of game that's more family friendly. Oh wait a minute! Sorry, we're getting jumped in here. Who's got the best noise markers? I'm inside. Does anybody have noise markers? Let's take a look at some of these zombies over here. Nobody has noise markers. All right, Scott, would you please roll the uh, more brings? And here we have a very impressive Napoleonic game set up. See, those look to be Austrians over here. And should be the French over here. Very nice to set up uh, display here along with movie lighting. And here are the Austrians. Very well painted figures. Beautiful terrain board. And beautiful figures. I guess these figures will come on later. Take a look at some of these guys. A lot better than I would ever do. And here's another game of No Moors. As you can see, very impressive table. Our castle keep up here. And our various different types of gnomes. On our war chicken here. Nice little artillery piece. A beautiful miniature building authority castle keep system. And the table goes all the way down. And you can see the different gnome armies. And those in turbans here. We got another hill here. Another barn, and then we got gnomes over here on, looks like lizards. Huge terrain board. Don't think my wife would let me set this up in the uh, in the flat. So. And here we have a aerial combat game. This is a World War II game, and you can see the players kind of have like a little display. It is as if they're actually flying the plane with all the instruments on it. And they're using pegs to uh, kind of show where the uh, instruments are. Let's see what happens. if it's taking 68 points of damage. Oh, there we go. But it's still functional. I think it just took out an anti-air I guess that was his target. All right, so it wasn't so bad. You did light damage, but... What is it? The radar installation. Ah, that's it. They're trying to take out a radar installation. So. As you can see, they're using uh, car antennas to adjust the uh, altitude on the planes. Which is pretty fun. 
Okay, this looks to be like a colonial type war, U.S., somewhere in Central South America, Philippines, okay. We got our jungles over here. And it looks like a lot of dead Filipinos. But they're trying to make a move over here. I think they're kind of out. Okay, but. Americans are done, Filipinos are done moving. Now we finally get the actual roll to see who gets it. All right. All right, sunstroke again, all die. Uh oh, looks like someone's going to get sunstroke. Nothing? Okay. Maybe reinforcements. Hopefully this is the Filipinos. Five is turn eight. Eight, you need a seven. Not yet. Looks like our Filipinos aren't going to win the day. So they're rolling for reinforcements, I think. Maybe there's a bunch of booby traps as well. Well, if they need reinforcements, there's a really big debt pile right there. Yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> un un unfortunately, unfortunately, the Filipinos don't get it. All right, this looks like the Plains of Abraham, uh, Seven Years' War, or as we call it in the United States, French and Indian War. And that looks to be the walls of the city of Quebec over there. And our game master is appropriately attired in his old theme. Reinforcements come in in column on the road. Have you divided your forces for the game? Four, four units. I don't know how many units you actually have. And if you don't know too much about the French and Indian War in America, there were very few field engagements. Uh, most of them were small skirmishes in the American wilderness. So this was the one major field battle fought in the North American continent. So that's why it's very popular with historical gamers. So we'll have to check back with these guys, see how they do. All right, this looks to be a air combat game, a modern air combat game. Okay, he's an R-33. From the looks of this, this is a Cold War game, probably Vietnam. Speed up to five. No, 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 no. Speed up to four. Three goes to two, up to four. Up to four. Alright, like I told you, um, not just historical games here, we have a sports game. Uh, this is corner kick. This is uh, football, association football, or as we Americans like to call it, the soccer. Uh, this looks to be a rematch of the World Cup final between Brazil and Germany. So much like other tabletop war games, a uh, certain amount of movements involved, and depending on the players, players probably have different characteristics. And uh, based on your goalie, I guess the difficulty to hit is a certain amount. So we'll have to see if the uh, Brazilians can come back and uh, win this one. the ball, you cannot move through the other guys. All right, I just had to show you guys this game. This is Monty Python's Spamalot. As you can see, we got the Trojan Rabbit. And you can see the villagers here. Arthur and his Kniggets. Uh, you have a police constable. And we have Camelot. Dancing Knights, uh, okay. Dancing yeah. Girls. It's, it's kind of a mashup of the, the movie. Of course, the, I'm just the just Black lost. Knight. Oh no, I thought about that because I have some. And there's uh, Swamp Castle. And I think we're missing Castle Hog. That's right, Castle Hog. Ah. And Castle Anthrax. Oh. No, I forgot oh, and the knights who say neat. Ah, excellent. Oh, and of course, the excellent. women just look at you. Making exciting underwear. Yes. And the, the, the cave of the Carabana. Oh, there you go. There's our uh, killer rabbit. Obviously, you guys did put a lot of time in I give you a lot of credit for that. Thank you. And the knight on the bridge. And the knights who say neat.
right, so that's going to be the end of our video because I'm going to jump in on this game right here. This is uh, Battle of Aspunk Creek, uh, American War for Independence, uh, fought in 1777. It's using the black powder rule set. As you can see, nice winter game board set up. Got our Americans over here. Looks to be uh, some British light infantry here. I like it, thank you. Any questions? Well, I'm playing in the game, so oh, this is for my video blog. Oh, cool, you can just say shit like that. And it looks like we got some, looks like Jaegers over there, some German Jaegers. And some more Americans over here. We'll have to give you a bow report how things is. It looks like uh, it's George. George Washington right here, so. This is after the Battle of Trenton, which was fought in Christmas 1776. And this is part of the aftermath, so. We'll see how it goes. All right, so signing off from Historicon, I'll give you a battle report of day two tomorrow.